Hi everyone, it's Mel Stevens here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you guys are all well. Today I am going to do a kind of celebration video. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, find the link down in the description below at mickmate94 you will have seen that on friday i put up a picture telling you guys that i have made 50 subscribers here on youtube which is awesome and asking for any questions regarding how i manage uh, living on my own so i waited for a little while um, for you guys to come up with some questions i had questions sent to me on Instagram and Facebook and uh, by text message a few people sent some questions to me as well so I'm just going to answer those questions for you guys here I'm sitting out in the Sun today it's a gorgeous day here in Mildura it's about 16 degrees uh, somewhere there on the grass you may be able to see at least Darcy, maybe Millie as well, they are here too. So let's get started in the video. Okay, so the first question that I have here is from Lisa and she's actually sent a couple of questions in so I'm going to answer them one at a time. Uh, question, the first part of the question is how do you cook and clean by yourself? Um, the short answer is very carefully, <laughs> um, especially when it comes to the cooking. Um, you know, so I don't burn myself or cut myself or anything. I did have some occupational therapy when I first lost my vision um, regarding how I managed to do some cooking. Um, so I, I have had that. How do I clean by myself? Um, Basically, I do it all by feel. I am going to do some videos in the future regarding how I do those two things. Um, but the other thing, especially with the cleaning, is I do get Camille. You guys have seen Camille in other videos. She's my SRS uh, support worker. I do get Camille to also, you know, just do a little bit of vacuuming or maybe a bit of a clean in the bathrooms you know once every now and then just to make sure that everything looks good so that I haven't missed anything but as I said I'll do some videos in the future regarding how I cook and clean um <clears throat> excuse me and then the second part of Lisa's question was how do you shop for your clothes um so usually I go with a sighted person to the shops. I know what I like. Um, I know the colours that I like, that kind of thing. So I can sort of tell my sighted friend that. And then we just look at stuff. I feel the textures. Um, and then choose out stuff judging by the size and everything. But once again, I'll do a video about that into the future. So my next question... I have is from Donna. Donna also asked me two questions. So Donna's first question was how do you manage your canned or boxed foods? So when I go to the supermarket I usually feel everything uh, when I get it like the shape and everything but I also have a thing called an ID mate which is a machine that scans barcodes on um, boxes cans all that sort of thing and tells me what that product is I'll link in the description below my uh, video that I did called my technology story and I show you how I use the barcode in that um, I also, as I said, I know a lot of stuff by feel and I also know a lot of stuff by where it is in the pantry. Um, <clears throat> and then, sorry, and then the next question from Donna, 
was how do you identify your clothes before they had things like color scanners so before they had color scanners and even now while well, they do have color scanners i know most if not all of my clothes by their feel i only have two or three t-shirts that are the same texture that are different I colors have. One shirt that I've got to two that feel exactly the same, but one is red and one is blue. And I have another shirt that feels exactly the same and I've got three different colors. So with those three, I do have to use my color reader to find out what it is. Um, but before I had color readers to identify my clothes, if I did have stuff that was the same texture and everything, no differences at all. I used to um, cut the tag out or cut, you know, the little string thing that some shirts have on shoulders. I used to cut those or sometimes I used to put stuff in a different place if they were the same as each other. So that's the answer to that question. So the next question is from Lil and she says, when you are looking for a house, how do you check out places to see if you like them? What is important to uh, you in choosing? Okay, so how do I check out places that I think uh, would be good to look at? I do spend a lot of time on things like realestate.com or rent.com or anything, you know, places, domain.com, all those sort of uh, housing, you know, real estate websites. I put in a search term that is about, you know, my price range, highest to lowest my uh, number of rooms that I want, like bedrooms that I want, that kind of thing. And then I tell it to search for places judging by that search term. I then read through all of the descriptions on the page and you know how much that place costs and everything. And then what I usually do after that, if I like the sound of something, then what I usually do is I usually send a link to um, a friend, a sighted friend, and get them to have a look at the photos of the house, see whether they think it looks neat, see whether it's got like heaps of stairs up to the front door, that sort of thing. And then if they come back and sort of say that they like it as well, I usually book an inspection and then go and have a look at the house in person. Um, so the second part of Lil's question was what is important to you in choosing? Uh, something that is that is neat and tidy, uh, well presented, <clears throat> that is laid out well, uh, that has a lot of space to move around inside. You know I don't like places with little tiny pokey you know, narrow corridors and narrow doorways and tiny bedrooms, that kind of thing. So I like to have a house with a bit of space in it. Uh, I like to have a house that has an open plan sort of kitchen and living area like my house here has. I like to have somewhere that doesn't have many um, steps up onto the veranda and if it does um, I like it to have a handrail both for my safety and um, because I have friends who come and visit me who are in wheelchairs uh, so I, I like them to be able to get into my to my home um, somewhere that's got a backyard a bit like this house does um, with plenty of grass and room for the dog to get out and do his thing and then somewhere close to public transport as well um, you know I've got a bus stop 500 meters down the road 
and that gets me both into the center of town and out to the shopping center. So having access to those um, facilities is also really important to me. So that's, that's sort of the basic of, um, yeah, of what I like to look for in a house. The next question that I have was asked by Liz B. And she says, what do you do when someone comes to the door? And how do you interact with door-to-door -door salesmen? So basically, uh, when someone comes to the door, if I'm expecting it, like if I'm expecting a food delivery or someone uh, to come over or something like that um, if I know that someone's going to come I just you know answer the door I usually try and um, get Darcy to go onto his bed when someone comes to the door just so that he doesn't bombard them and you know run into them and shove his face in there in their way and everything either that or I just try and make sure that he is gentle when he's interacting with people who come to the door um, and then I yeah just open the door let them come in um, things like that I do tend to especially when it's things like um, my support workers coming over I do tend to leave the door unlocked and she knows to just uh, let herself in if the door is unlocked um, and if I'm not actually in the vicinity I might be down in my bedroom or something like that she knows to come in and and just wait for me same with uh, a couple of my other friends so with my friends yeah I tend to just leave the door open and let them in uh, let them let themselves in sorry uh, door to door salespeople when someone knocks at the door randomly and I don't actually know that you know they're coming um, if it is a door-to-door -door salesperson if I'm not expecting a delivery or anything like that um, if someone knocks on the door randomly I just usually ignore it unless I know that they would have actually seen me so if I'm sitting uh, on the lounge chair with the front blind open I know that uh, people can see me sitting there so I have to go to the door um, and then if they are door-to-door -door salespeople I'm sure everyone watching this video has had experiences with door-to-door -door salespeople you usually make up some kind of lie about you're just about to go out or you don't have any money in the house or whatever so that's how I treat them so the final question is from Lizzie S. There's lots of Lizzes and lots of people with L names on this vlog. Um, so Lizzie S asks, how do you prefer to cook? For example, electric stove, gas stove or microwave? Um, 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 um. I would probably say either type of stove, doesn't really matter. I grew up with a gas stove uh, and that was okay because uh, it was really easy to use you know you didn't have to use matches or anything it was I don't know how it lit but it you know you clicked the thing and it went vroom, and it just like worked um, that was a really bad explanation and a really weird sound effects sorry so yeah so I like the gas stove I have an electric stove in this house. The only thing I prefer about a gas stove over an electric stove is that the gas stove, you turn it off, it goes cold, like straight away. Whereas an electric stove stays hot for longer. And also with an electric stove, um, you kind of have to, uh, yeah be mindful of the fact that it does stay hot for longer when you do turn it off uh, 
and I liked with the gas stove I liked how you could hear when it turned on because it did make that whooshing noise when it um, when it lit you could tell that it was you know working or not and you could also tell uh, how high it was turned up by the kind of volume of the hissing noise that the gas made I hope that made sense so which do I prefer I'm going to say gas only because of the um, fact that it cools down when you turn it off a lot quicker than an electric stove so guys I'm going to end this video here I'm hoping to get it edited and uploaded this afternoon so I need to end the video and go and get it edited. I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching my answers to these questions in the Q&A. If you sent me a question and I didn't answer it, I am very sorry. I had, as I said, about three or four different platforms upon which people sent me questions. so. If I've accidentally missed your question out, I'm so sorry. I will do another Q&A like this at 100 subscribers, I hope. So keep watching my videos. Share them with your friends and family. Remember to subscribe to my channel, please, uh, to keep getting some more awesome content all about blindness. And also remember to go and like Darcy the Guide Dog's Facebook page, which I'll link down in the description below. Remember to follow me on Instagram at mickmate94, which I will also link down in the description below. And if you are subscribed to my channel already, don't forget to click the bell notification so you know when I upload next. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Have a great day. Bye.